He fixes the problem, he hires the salespeople and gets the inventory, and then what happened? Sold 200 cars in August and made more money than we had ever made. Addicted to being savage, my life is a little graphic Like HBO making magic, I'm rapping to make that passive Money coming from traffic, to win mental gymnastics I'm fluid and problematic What I want you to understand, hey, your sales team doesn't need goals, they need standards You guys got it? Okay, but also the leader needs standards, am I right? Okay guys, everybody have a seat, let's, let's, let's go into this And by the way, listen, anybody's allowed to ask any question at any time now, I'm going to keep some of my team up here with me because I'm nothing without a team. Any one of you right now could literally be dissolved without your team. Now, some of you in here, you don't have a team. You don't have a team. You need one. So I'm going to tell you how to build one. So listen carefully. Because by the way, anything that you want to do big in this life, you're going to need a team. Well, number one, everybody write this down. My team can't be what I'm not. Okay, like this is super important. This will set the tone for the entire day. Your team cannot be what you're not. Now I'm gonna ask you guys what you want from your team. Do you guys want a fired up team, yes or no? Yes. All right, ask yourself, one to 10, am I fired up? I mean, I, I, and don't, and listen, I really wanna know. From one to 10, I mean really, how much fire are you can bring into the table on a daily basis? By the way, let's explain what I mean by that. The second you walk into work and the minute you leave, any time an employee or a, a teammate or your army, whatever you call them, I call my team my army because we're an army and we're going to war. We're gonna go, we're gonna go destroy everybody. I, I hear shit about market share. People are like, oh, our goal is to pick up a little market share this year. No, my goal is to take the market. Okay, like, like you want to get a market share? What are you talking about? You want to share? I don't do good sharing. Okay, I don't like sharing. Okay, like some of you, that's your problem. And by the way, when you say market share, that means you want a piece of average. No fucking way. That's why when I hear people say, well, uh, compared to, you know, what the market share is and uh, X, Y, and Z standard, you know, we're right where we need to be. Yeah, you're fucking dead at average. Good job. I want you to be so great when you leave today that you're not even, nobody's number two to you. They're number one in their own category. They don't even put you in the same category as other people. They're like, okay, so here's roofing. Uh, we'll, we'll take the Elliott group out, right? And then we're going to talk about the normal people. Because they're not even going to put you in there. Because it just doesn't make sense. It makes everybody else look silly. So they can't be what you can't have. I have a lot of energy, okay? My energy runs at a 10 all day long. I run at a hot 120, okay? Everybody, do you run at a cool 60? You run at a warm 80? Are you at a hot 120? What do you run? What's the thermostat in you? What's the thermostat when you walk into work? Okay, the second you walk into work, how are you to your team? Do you shake every motherfucker's hands? I'm a hugger. My team are huggers. A lot of you, you've met my team, you'll notice they shake your hand and then they hug you. You know why? Because we're made for communion. I understand. The greatest thing that I do in my company, when COVID hit, okay, 20, 2020, when it hit, what I do is that people, when they're face to face with each other, they don't know how to interact anymore. A lot of you guys are going to shake your hands. You shake hands like this. Like it's fucking weird. Do you guys know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, where, like, like we should have been taught step one in business, how to shake a hand. Okay. The palm goes into the other palm. There's two men, it's an ironclad handshake, or even if there's a woman involved, and you know it's a handshake, you look at each other in the eye, you say, my name is, they say their name, and then you repeat their name, you say, Tom, nice to meet you, and then you do this again. And then you part. People don't do that no more. Yeah. Guys, how important is it that you show your team how much everybody on the team matters? Some of you in here, you only like your top reps. Okay, you walk in, you're disgusted with the ones not performing. Yep. When your fucking team sees that you're disgusted with the ones not performing, your top reps, now they're fucking disgusted too. Mm -hmm. They will emulate everything you do. Guys, do you want them to look up to you? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Everything you do, they'll do. Okay, step two. Your team will only work half as hard as you. If you're lucky, you'll have one or two on the team that will surpass you or match you. But this is a rule, a rule to live by. Your team will only work half as hard as you. So, some of you in here, you're comfortable, man. And the reason why your team isn't working hard is because you're lazy. 
You walk around, you've got your money, you've got your house, you've got your cars, they don't have theirs, so you're fucking slowing down, and your team who don't have shit, they're slowing down because they're watching you. You're fucking yourself. You're literally self-sabotaging your own company. You are. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Now, I want to tell you guys something, okay? So, what do I want my team to have? Number one, I want my team to have a delusional belief. What does that mean? That means all I see is good. I don't see anything bad. Number two, I master my mouth. I never say anything negative, ever. A lot of you in here, you say negative shit around your team, and that's exactly why they're negative. Right. Number two, you never talk shit about anyone on the company, no matter what. If you want to say something, you say it to their fucking face. You pull them to the side, say, Tommy, come here. Come over and say, Tommy, we got a problem, and I love you. Notice, what am I going to do? Everybody say that. Everybody write this down. If you want to have a hard conversation with somebody, learn how to frame. You guys know how to sell and shit, right? Yeah. Frame people. Okay, are you ready? It goes like this. Tommy, first of all, we need to have a talk. And I love you. You know I love you, right? Now listen, if I'm a good leader, I'm going to be direct with you. I don't want to walk around on eggshells. And when I see you do stuff that, you don't, that you're, you're not doing that's good for you, do you want me to tell you or not tell you? The day I don't tell you, we probably have a problem. So I always want to know that I can come up and talk to you if I see something. And I want you to do the same with me. Is that fair? Okay. If you had food on your face, okay, would you want me to tell you? Oh, yeah, because yeah, that's what friends do. Well, you've got food on your face. You're slow at working. You don't have a good attitude. Maybe something's going on at home I don't know about. But this isn't you. And I don't like it. And if this isn't you, I know you don't like it. Tell me what's going on. One of two things. Either we got a problem, and I'll help you fix it and solve it, or you've gotten comfortable. I'm okay with either one of them, but whatever it is, we're going to address it now, and we kill it this very moment. Deal? So spit it out. Deal. What is it? See, I'm going to tell you guys something. When you let a problem go in your marriage, it's called death by a thousand paper cuts. You'll eventually end up divorced. You won't even know fucking why. You'll sleep in the same bed for years, miles apart. You'll hate each other. You'll be, you'll be rude, you'll be, and you'll hate your life. You will hate your life in the process. The same thing goes with raising kids. The same thing goes with running a team. Listen to me. You can leave no distance between you and your team at any point. At any point. Here's what I want to tell you. This is the greatest thing. You must create a culture in which, which conflict an open conversation is allowed. Notice, most people, you know, you know why most leaders are the worst leaders ever? Because they want to avoid conflict. And, and by the way, listen, I'm going to say a vice versa to that. They avoid the good conflict they should be having, and they create bad conflict. Okay? You, you, you know where the end of your fate ends? When your fate is over and done? That's your fucking anger. When somebody does something that you don't like, a lot of you in this room go from zero to 120 real fucking fast and you want to snap. And I'm going to tell you, tread carefully. If I tell you something and you don't like the way I come at you when I tell you, you're not going to, you're not going to receive it very well. But if I come at you the right way and I show you that I love you and I show you that I care about you and I show you that you're important to me and I show you that I'm here with you, I can tell you anything I want. You got to be careful when something happens in your company, don't ever make a same day decision. Making fast decisions that are good for you are different than making fast decisions that are bad for you. And some of you right now, some of you in this room have lost your best employees because you fucking snapped quickly. And by the way, what if you didn't lose them and they still work for you, but they fucking don't respect you no more? You still lost them. And some of you, you know who I'm talking about. You know some people in your company, you've been fast to snap at, and now they don't care about you no more. Guys, it takes so long to fix these stupid ass problems that are easy to solve. Now, now, what do we do? We just change. That's all we do. This is common sense. 
You're the leader. When you raise your hand as the leader, that means everything that you do, you're being the example for everybody else to do that same thing. Does that make sense? So all of you in here right now, how did you come in here today image-wise? How do you dress? How did you come in here today with your attitude? What kind of energy did you carry? Okay. You know, like, what kind of belief do you have? Are you open-minded? You know, a lot of you in here, you're really not open-minded yet. Today, we'll slowly pivot you over, over but you're not open-minded. You're literally right now wanting to know that you're a f***ing badass. You're not. One to ten, you're a one. You're nobody. You're not as good as you want to be. Hopefully, that's why you bought a ticket. So when you come here, you can figure out how to create your ten. Now, I said this to somebody yesterday. I said, your one may be better than someone else's ten. Okay? I'm, my one is better than a lot of people's tens. But my ten, when I get to my ten, I'm fucking shut up. Okay, so I need some of you to know this, that you guys have so much room to grow. Well, you got to believe you have room to grow, and you got to be looking for growth in order to grow. And what I learned about a lot of leaders, man, is that you guys, this is so crazy, man, and I want to tell you, because this is important. As you guys are trying to learn today, my wife one day, she goes, dude, you're nobody. You need to come back down, okay? When our company was fucking exploding, my head got to me quick. Some of you, your numbers... Your business, last year, I know the automotive industry was really big. A lot of people ran some really big fucking numbers. RVs were running 20 grand a copy, fucking killing it. 80% of them are going out of business. Last year, they were fucking spending all their money, buying all their cars, doing everything they can, running around, taking over the world. This year, they're fucking going out of business. Dude, listen, man. Your goal in here is to understand that there's always going to be change. You're always going to have things come against your business and your family that's going to require you to be adaptable and change. So when you're in this room today, I want you to think about a couple things. Number one, there's strategies that we could adopt. Strategies. Number two, there's, there's thinking. Stilling the way that other people process things and think is one of the best things that I do. I can emulate a behavior really quickly, but that behavior can go away if this thinking changes. And my thinking, the way that I operate all day long, is the most important thing in my life. Some of you right now, I'm telling you, the way you process shit is pretty negative. Now, I want to tell you something. The growth mindset, Chris, you remember? Come here real quick, Chris. I want you to, I want to talk to you. Give it up for Chris. Come on. And, and I, would bring, I would bring his business partner up, Travis, but I want to talk to him because I talked to him last time. Um, sometimes getting the truth is fucking hard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And one of the things I've been training with him for a couple years now and his business partner, Travis, and his whole team. And he's in the automotive industry. Mm -hmm. And they had a small little independent store that was doing 30, 40 cars a month, right? Right. Okay. He flies out and I just punch him in the face. I'm just mm -hmm. giving him all this shit. And he's thinking, man, and I just said, hey, dude, listen, I'll make a deal with you. I'm just never going to lie to you. I'm just going to tell you the truth. Everyone else, see, because you're the boss. When he was back home, he's the owner. He's the boss. So everybody's like kissing his ass. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to kiss your ass. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is tell you the truth. And, and, and if you'll respect me and understand that the truth is what leaders live by, the truth. You'll change and you'll grow your business. Now, the last time we were here on stage, you remember that? I right there? He bought a new, listen, they started growing their company. They started doing good. They went in. They spent a whole bunch of money, millions of dollars, buying a new building. They yeah, spent $4 million, all the money they had to buy a new building. We're getting ready for this next deal. Well, guess what happens? They need to sell more cars. The nut went from this to this. It's more expensive now. It's like when you live in a little house and go to a big house. Well, your bills used to be $2,500. Now they're $12,500. Or they're $25,000. It's like shit starts to change. Just your bills. That means you got to make more money because you got nicer shit. Well, now that he's got all this nicer shit, he's got this big ass lot, he's got this big ass beautiful place, he's ready to go to the next level. Guess what happened? People are selling the same as they sold at the last store, which means now they're losing money. And he sat here on stage and he goes, dude, I'm, I'm losing money. And you were fucking pissed off, am I right? Very pissed off, yeah. He was mad. He was pissed off. You know what I said? I said, it's easy. Okay? He's looking at his people. He wants to get fucking mad. You want to do all this? Remember that? I was, getting, I was like, bro. I was real mad. Yeah, I was like, dude, it's your fault. I was like, it's your fault. I said, you, you don't have enough in inventory to even make the money to cover the no nut. And you don't have enough inventory. salespeople. You don't have this. And I said, listen, who's in charge? He's like, I'm in charge. 
I said, okay. So you're going to go home and you're going to solve these problems like an owner fucking does. And then you're going to get the results that you want. It's fucking common sense. It's that easy. He goes home. He fixes the problem. He hires the salespeople. He gets the inventory. And then what happened? Sold 200 cars in August and made more money than we had ever made. was why this was why they bought the store mm -hmm. that's it now you got to do it again mm -hmm. but i'll even i'll even say something else i'll say that like you you know i needed to get smacked in the face and and that's what i come to andy about years ago when i came to andy and ian and i'm sitting there talking to him you know the, the one thing i said to him was just don't ever fucking lie to me i don't need somebody to tell me how good i'm doing i don't need to hear what a great job we're doing and how we're kicking ass I need to know when I'm when I'm when I'm not stepping up to the plate, and I know that I'm constantly failing, and and that's what I come to this team for. And, and Andy brought me up here, punched me in the face. That was like the third time I've probably been to an event where Andy punched me in the face. And uh, I still still left. He's like, "Well, f you don't know about buying cars. You don't know anything about buying cars, and you know buying cars is hard now." Mm -hmm. And 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 I left the stage, and, and much to your credit, and I, I got to tell you this, I, I days later I'm still like, you know, you don't have to buy cars, you know. Well, sure enough, doesn't he call me a few days later? He sends me a text message. He says, here's a guy. You're going to call him. You're going to do this. You're going to make this happen. So he didn't just, as far as being a leader goes, i got to give you this. Resources. He punched me, punched me in the face, gave me, gave me the reality, right? Like, it was all my fault. It was so my fault. I had eight salespeople and 86 cars in inventory, and I needed to sell 200. How the fuck is that going to happen? Yep. But I couldn't even see that until Andy smacked me in the face with it. But then I wanted to make more excuses and feel bad about myself because he can't buy any cars, right? But then he, then Andy, as a leader, took, took, took me, you know, gave me a few days to feel bad about myself, and then gave me the resources, made, made the connections with me, put me in touch with an amazing man, David Long. We built a buying center. I hired the people I needed to hire. We built a buying center, and all of a sudden now we're buying 50 to 100 cars a month, retail cars, on top of what we were doing. My inventory comes up, and we can crush it, sell 200 cars. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So... Everybody in here, you guys got a problem, am I right? Yeah. Okay, now listen to me. Some of you in here, you're a leader. You don't have a team today, but you're like, I'm going to build a team, so I want to be here, so I want to know how to build my team. All right, so I'm going to talk about that first. I got and a then, question, Andy. yes, sir. I got a question. Yes. So, what happens when you're speaking to somebody and they don't accept the truth? They don't reciprocate that love and that care? They die. Let's, let's be honest, in reality, there are people that just don't care. Okay, yeah, so, so my question is you got to look at yourself in the mirror and say, have I done everything that I can do with this person because you're the one who hired them, okay? Okay, so, so you got to understand something. Somebody comes into my company, they didn't get hired by Bob. And see, some of you in here, you've outgrown different positions and you don't do the hiring anymore. That's fine. But whoever's doing it better believe the same way you believe. And if they hired them and they go to fire somebody, I want to know why. I want to know because I don't give up on people. I like second chance people. I'm a 90th million chance person. So some of you in here, like I like second chance people. I like people that are hard to learn, but when they get it, they're dangerous. I like that. So my question is, if you hired him, you hired him, hey, Bob, I'm going to bring you on. This is our core beliefs, which I'll talk about that in a second. You bring him on into the company, and then they're not doing what you want. You need to say, hey, Bob, remember the conversation me and you had? We were sitting down. I told you what we were going to do. You said you were going to do that. You said you were coachable. You said you didn't need to be a baby. You didn't need a babysitter. Remember you told me that? Did you lie to me? I'm asking you because listen to me. I don't want to push you if you don't want to be positively peer pressured. I'm going to, and by the way, before I even hire you, I will explain to you that my goal as a leader in this company is to positively peer pressure you in life to succeed. And if you don't like that, you do not want to be here. Hey guys, I just want to tell you you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with a friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.